Hey guys, my name is Ruben Anton. In this video, we're going to go over the current energies as we're approaching August 2020 and a lot of the anticipation, the anxiety, the anchoring and the activation that is happening. But with that also comes a lot of restlessness for a lot of people. So with that said, this message is intended to be uh, for the collective and what you guys may need to hear from source through me for your collective ascension and to help you navigate these energies psychologically, spiritually, mentally and otherwise. So with that said, from source through me, a lot of what's coming up right now is the things that we are still holding on to not panning out in the way that we intended them to. And this is really beginning to draw contrast between our highest alignment and that which is predicated on our uh, ego or our desires uh, mentally or otherwise here in this paradigm. So it's really beginning to get us to focus on what it is that is our soul calling for the greater good of all. So a lot of what's also been happening and coming up is to begin to anchor in for a lot of the people that have been very uh, attuned to the spiritual energies that are coming up to really begin to anchor in that work. So it's almost like this very uh, dramatic shift per se, uh, for lack of a better term, of those that have been very connected into the upper realms into their spirituality are now being called to uh, almost abruptly anchor in a lot of the uh, the work and and your uh, desire and calling but this is also the energy of feeling as though we must anchor in or the understanding and the anticipation that what we are being called to do is being anchored in but also not seeing the full picture for a lot of people and this is triggering a lot of anticipation or anxiety which are two sides of the same coin and so for for that collective a lot of that is really uh what is happening is we are being guided to anchor in and be present in this moment rather than anticipating what is coming up or to plan ahead right because it's really focusing and helping us focus on being present and the energy of presence supports our ability to focus our full attention and stay in the here and now. And that's really what a lot of us are being called to do and to really step into ahead of anchoring in that which we desire most. At the same time, a lot of people are having a lot of the triggers that have not been completely healed come up. And in this lifetime, and especially during this time for a lot of people, in this linear time speed sequence, we are being called to really handle and deal with all of those triggers because as the energy and the vibration of the earth shifts and ascends those things that are weighing us down and from our uh, ego pain body density are no longer really able to be carried forward into where we're going in this next step of our spiritual evolution and so a lot of things that could even begin to be very helpful right now is for example not only redecorating so, so a lot of the anxiety and, and a lot of this um you know anticipation or discomfort with the immediate world around you may be asking you to begin to shift the energy around around you in general so that could be as little as maybe uh cleaning out old energies or even shifting a lot of the elements in your room and this may sound a little bit odd but for example, if you've been very maybe uh, hyper attuned to the Galactic Federation or that vibrational resonance, you may be called more to maybe shift some of the metals for more woodsy stuff. And it may not be in your obvious awareness, but this is something that I've been guided to communicate to you guys that could help you begin to cipher those energies that you may not quite understand entirely right now, but it's the general discomfort maybe around you so it could be elemental so not only doing maybe like an energy cleansing or or a grounding a meditative uh, exercise but you know if especially if you've been more in, if spiritually inclined or attuned it could be the energy of doing things that are more grounding because this is going to be energies that are going to really allow us to dance and anchor in our higher self because really our connection is whatever source we believe in we all come from the same one right so it's the understanding that 
our connection to the infinite source and to the higher self and the greatest good for ourselves but uh but also with the greatest good of all in mind so understanding that the greatest good for all is the primary consciousness that we are being recalibrated to so if you understand you know we're special beings having human experience and so we came into this world there was a defragmentation of unity consciousness right into individuals having us having individual human experience as spiritual beings and so with that as we are ascending to a collective consciousness and a unity consciousness a lot of the triggers that have been fragmented as source rediscovering itself through human experience a, a lot of those things are being uh, being anchored to manifest through us right so the things that we've desired most for the greatest good of all it's also with the understanding and the central column balance of understanding that filling up our own cup and standing in our own alignments and our own power is in, in essentially giving other people the permission to do that within themselves and so it's the energy of balancing and anchoring as above so below as within so without but then doing it all while being present simultaneously so every next level of our life will demand a different us and so this is really about stepping into the highest alignment understanding what that is which is why a lot of these triggers are coming up and with that in addition to that rising spiritually as we handle those triggers to be able to sustain the the vessel uh, of our of our body sustained the light and the abundance of that which we've desired most so that desire was placed within us so that we can really share the light with the rest of the world but understanding that we must come into the alignment and filling our own cup first which a lot of empaths have had a harder time really beginning to anchor or understand and so as that is happening that's part of the reason why there's a shift between people that have been very spiritually inclined that are now being almost abruptly forced to anchor inversely a lot of the people that have been very resistant towards their spiritual inclinations are now being kind of forced to sit still as there is not much that can be accomplished during this time and Things that are no longer in alignment are going to be met with increasing resistance. So the more we try to do things that are not in our authentic desire or soul calling is going to met with increasingly more resistance. So a lot of people that have been in this paradigm, you know, maybe workaholics or, you know, in kind of that hustle culture that is rooted on uh, unhealed trauma or, or feeling that, you know, we must be a certain kind of character that the 3d matrix or this this paradigm uh, told us we should be to be worthy of love or to be worthy of the presence of those we admire and still running in that kind of rat race building and building and building without the solid foundation of knowing that self that is going to be met with increasing resistance and will likely also begin to defragment as we are being called to come into uh the zero point of our higher self inner child and uh collective source consciousness right so there's a lot of uh, for lack of a better term chaos right but it's happening in perfect order because we kind of manifested this in order to go back to remembrance we manifested the uh, the current time to, to really bring to the forefront what we have collectively suppressing you know throughout all of time so if you think about even the things that we are purging now, right? Some things are not even from our own uh, personal incarnation in this linear time space sequence, but rather an archetype that we resonate with that's being purged. And so a lot of the people that are holding on to exterior sources of validation beyond reasonable doubt, so beyond understanding themselves or trying to introspect or understanding that the light you see in me is the light you see in you or other people that you follow uh, to help you by your own will accord go back to remembrance the the following of those uh, false leaderships or false gods is also becoming uh, a lot more difficult to resonate with and that is by divine order so 
And that is really to begin to show you the discernment of what you do and do not resonate with, even with the people that were idolized or admired. So as this is happening, the old systems of value or um, belonging that we used to follow or understand are also no longer resonating. And so for that, um, I'm going to now... Uh, pull some cards here from the sacred geometry um, to see if there's anything that is specifically uh, for this collective that needs to hear during this time for guidance. Divine Feminine came up, not surprisingly, and as well as Divine Masculine. Okay, so, um, and, and so something that's important to understand is that these are energies within ourselves. And when we come into uh, collective consciousness or Christ consciousness, it's really a lot of the point where we begin to perfectly balance those energies. Because if we think about the masculine, when we say love and light, the masculine is the light, whereas the feminine is the love, and together we make source consciousness. And so in some ways, if you think about it that way, part of the reason we are having this human experience and we can experience heaven and hell in this human incarnation because as I always say, until you surrender love or surrender fear, you're going to be in a state of limbo because they simply cannot coexist, right? So it's part of finding that discernment. But until we get to that point, we come into a, a feminine and masculine uh, polarities in this paradigm because those are kind of the distortions of that uh, polarity archetype that we need to transcend. Whether you're male or female, we both come with uh, distorted masculine and feminine qualities that we are being made to integrate during this human incarnation to come to that totality and full awareness. And so with that, the frequency of, of divine feminine supports our self receptive nurturing side, facilitating our intuition and intrinsic understanding of our connection to the cosmos. So something that the collective needs to hear about our inner feminine is the the idea of anchoring in and balancing the intuition as well as the masculine ability to anchor that in so the frequency of the divine masculine supports our active focus and strong side facilitating our capacity to transform our dreams into form which is literally um how we started this this video uh speaking and talking about and so that has to do with really going back to above and below within and without but then understand that linear time space is a man made construct so then all there is is the now right like i always say right now in this moment we are the power and the gravity source that is holding ourselves together and so in that sense the very essence of being a human having a human experience during this particular time especially is to really anchor in the divinity sign of our masculine side of our masculine energy and anchor in having had mastered or coming to the mastery of the feminine energy which is intuition it is the cosmos it is all of those things and then anchoring in love and light within ourselves to ascend and catapult to the next version of of this human uh experience and also the transgression or transformation and ascension of this earth and the planetary cosmos so with that it, it's part of the reason is why we are now shifting. Um, if you were very spiritual, now you're being called to abruptly ground. And it's why I was guided to, to go over understanding the different elements around you and coming more aware to that understanding while simultaneously the masculine is being almost a lot of times ejected now into coming to the understanding and at least the cognition to begin to anchor in that divinity of the spiritual divine being within self right because so many in this particular time and this ascension process are being called to what is known as christ consciousness which is the 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 purest essence of the divinity of the divine masculine and divine feminine in unity uh, consciousness and in unity integration and so because that is so imperative now during this time it's why there is so much a defragmentation and a recalibration of the current energies and so with that said i will now uh, go into the next phase of this energy update because with divine masculine and feminine coming up i am being guided now to do a collective in-depth reading um on uh, 
the, the love spiritual contracts that we learn and a lot of what we ascend is being shown through spirituality and and relationships so with that said this will begin the next phase of what we're learning through romantic relationships so with that now i will pull some cards as to what is now coming up for the feminine polarity so i will now draw these into two different um breakdowns and the different energies and so something else that's coming up as well it's interesting because these cards actually uh, i drew before the reading as the dominating angels that were going to guide us to clarity during this time and what came up as the cards naturally on the left column the feminine came out uh over the this card and intellectual richness protects fertility in of women makes uh, children respectful towards their parents and so with that uh the next breakdown that came through is the divine feminine abundance and being present and so oh that's interesting and then duality is center so this might actually end up being a longer reading as these came out and, and it, it looks like it's going to be a rather complex message here and so here with the divine feminine we're seeing the frequency um and with this card coming up as uh protecting fertility of women in alignment with universal medicine elevation of the soul revelation of mysteries is that a lot of the inner feminine whether you're male or female it's really coming into its power of of anchoring in a lot of the intellect, the structure, the systems that have been predominantly in the masculine jurisdiction, stereotypically speaking, in the old paradigm. And so with that, the energy of abundance and presence is both coming up for the feminine. So the energy of abundance activates our ability to manifest the wealth we need and the sense of fulfillment that comes from the heart and soul are overflowing with love and gratitude. So with this the it, it is very much kind of how we started the reading uh or, or this video it is very much the energy of anchoring in the uh, that which which uh, financially and otherwise we have desired most and we've been called to really anchoring our pinnacles so a lot of the creative expression a lot of the, the business savviness you're going to be naturally uh, guided and inspired so not by uh, pressure or by the idea that it needs to happen or needs to be done but rather by divine inspiration you're going to be guided to begin to follow the steps on an intuitive soul level to that which leads you into anchoring that for the greater good of all and so the energy of being presence it supports our ability to focus our full attention and stay in the here and now and again this is a the theme of this entire energy in this video and what this is saying is a lot of times the feminine has a predisposition as well as the masculine our whole human experience has a predisposition but this is speaking to the inner feminine within us so whether you're masculine or feminine or male or female is is this idea of, of being and something that i just got to is that the the next and next and next is part of the uh, distorted psychic intuitive feminine aspect of of wanting to know what's happening for the anticipation or for the present state of mind not realizing that in this moment we are everything we need and we are present in this moment so it is the energy of not so much wondering or following what your maybe your love interest or counterpart or twin flame or soulmate or whatever is doing but rather understanding where that is coming from for example I'll give you a more practical example rather than protesting for example something like you know wearing a mask or something like that rather than the ideology that somehow rebelling against that is is your inner work when it actually isn't so your inner work would actually be what is it within you that is being triggered to behave this way in this behavior is it divinely guided and i'm getting already that for most people it's not it's going to be very few people that are generally guided to be that way or is it coming from a place of righteous indignation from unhealed trauma or wounds 
and the shadow work would actually be to begin to understand what about us or the situation makes us feel as though we need to uh, rebel uh, in that manner to the outside world, right? Because we understand that everything about spiritual beings having human experience lives already within us. So with that, understanding the line between triggers and understanding that because a trigger, triggers come with a surge of emotion and idea or identity or what have you, doesn't mean that they're messages it means that you are being called to do something but not without but rather within and so really begin to understand where that is coming from is imperative during this time expression and forgiveness and this is for the masculine and the feminine so this is for everyone um, the frequency of expression supports your ability to bring out our true essence through many different forms of communication so this is really speaking on breaking down the ideas of what we knew was communication or what we knew and accepted as proper forms of expression or communication and really begin to challenge. You know, for example, when someone tells you, you quote unquote need to do this, it's understanding that if it was something you needed, you would know. And being able to discern and express that uh, without equivocation or mental reservation, transcending the the wounds or the triggers or the complacency, yes, man, yes, woman kind of person. And in doing so, it allows that other party to also begin to take on that power because we've gone to this point because everyone has been avoiding empowerment and avoiding triggers and avoiding uncomfortable conversations. And so that's how we came to the point of so much suppressed emotions and anxiety and dramas and what have you. So as we begin, we begin to anchor in politely again, because a lot of is the reason is so charged is because it has been bottled up. So it's about anchoring in without trigger, because part of the triggers oftentimes, especially when it comes to this happen because we haven't spoken out prior until some until we inevitably uh something triggers us to crack or to react right but we react because we haven't been proactive and we've never been proactive with the things that have made us uncomfortable and so it's it's breaking that mold so that it no longer carries a charge with you and then you begin to diffuse that so rather than constantly people telling you how you should respond right because it's not up to anyone to tell you what is and is not an appropriate emotional response they are not no one outside of you is the arbitrator of a, a, a judge jury or persecutor of how you should and shouldn't respond emotionally it's and if they are being triggered to respond it's because something within them did not allow them to feel as though they could respond emotionally when they felt similar to you meaning that if someone says that you should not overreact is because it is triggering in them when they feel emotionally restricted maybe by their parents or childhood or otherwise to react and though and so then it's bringing that discomfort within them because they haven't healed that right so understanding that and your freedom of expression allows other people to inevitably oftentimes be triggered but in that the invitation for them to begin to heal a lot of those wounds and introspect on why they are being triggered and i'm getting that especially with the fact that this is coming in juxtaposition with um an incongruence excuse me with forgiveness and so a lot of this has to do with being able to forgive ourselves and oftentimes that means forgive ourselves for those times that we felt we were unable to respond and then take that ability to respond back into our alignments into our power and being able to finally respond able knowing able and willingly to a specific scenario or circumstance knowing that it's something that um it's in your full freedom of having a human existence uh to do so and the next card is freedom it's interesting because there's two freedoms here, which I, they're both 21. But uh, so I, I r right away, I'm getting that one of them is masculine, one of them is feminine. Um, so these both must be wanting to be read. Um, so I will interpret this one for the masculine. 
uh, and so the energy of freedom supports our senses of limitless possibility and potential boundless expression and bold exploration again this goes back to the masculine polarity now being invited to a freely step into our creative expression which has been suppressed for a very long time um or it, there's been a lot of shame and so it's it's the fact that until you begin to anchor in or embark on that and allow yourself to express again going back to central calm to express freely but with the proper consciousness of knowing thyself and understanding how the different triggers uh mean to you in different ways of your life uh by doing so um allowing yourself to kind of begin to anchor in that kind of christ consciousness i'm also getting that for a lot of you guys maybe writing coloring uh, home projects that are in that pro, that invite and provoke your creativity it might be a good time to begin to express that nature within yourself for the feminine of uh, freedom supports our sense of limitless possibility potential balance expression and will exploration so i guess they both say the same thing um so uh again it it calls into really um for the feminine that what's sticking out for me is really the potential right so anchoring in not just our ability to imagine but also anchor in the potential and so something that um i'm being guided to draw a, a present challenge during this time and i'm Seeing that this is for both the masculine and feminine and something we can uh, begin to try to defuse by bringing it into our, uh, our frontal consciousness. Uh, uh, okay, um, so procures the love of a woman, tells of things past, present, and future, builds love between friendship and enemy. So, uh, okay, so what I'm getting from this is the uh, energy of attachment. And so which i'm getting in direct opposition to freedom uh attachment is a root of all suffering and so for many both masculine and feminine it's um understanding that a lot of what's happening right now may be in the realm of maybe psychic hoovering and moving past that um understanding that that which we connect or love within others are an expression of the love within ourselves so i'm getting that as i've always said our romantic interest our love interest our the karmic lesson of love as a dualistic expression of this paradigm has to do with being that source is the highest vibrational resonance of uh, unconditional love and so i always say this you know unconditional love is a love without attachment without conditions expectations or the expectation to even return and for that reason it is free will that is unconditional love so we are being called into respect to understand the free will of those who we love but also understand that in this duality matrix uh system of the third density our romantic interest is really the activation of source showing itself to our level of perception through the prism of that which we are romantically interested in and for that begins the activation of unconditional love and that desire to understand you know that that love right w which is the connection to source higher self uh god universe whatever you want to call it and to begin to draw distinction of that which unconditional love is eternal is our suffering that is temporary and it invites us to really begin to introspect the contrast between that which exists within the heart space of unconditional love and contrast to validation excitement and escapism and 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 all of those things that it lives in the world without and to begin to understand and activate that love which is within ourself that is uh the light we see in them is the light we see in ourselves and that is being called to be activated within ourselves especially now that we are ascending to that kind of christ consciousness and so many people especially people that are maybe watching a lot of a lot of readings about romantic interest are being called to really integrate and the reason why a lot of those people may not be having union right now is going back to the video i said earlier um it, it's going back to the 
understanding that we must come into Christ consciousness if you are experiencing that level of pain, because pain ultimately does come from attachment, and and to align with that. And it's it's the uh, source or your higher self preventing you from being so caught up in the future by taking those ideologies away. So whether that is feeling as though there's no communication or what have you, it is to get you to rip away from, from that validation or experience without to really anchor in within and begin to understand what aspects of yourself you are seeing in that person and to really summon and activate that within yourself. So something that um, this is for, for some people that are experiencing a present challenge in their interpretation of their current experience that is coming up. And that is the son of wands. And it's interesting in the father of wands. So what I'm getting right away with the father and the son is to connect to that masculine power within that understanding that, you know, source consciousness connecting to the light. So what I'm getting is understanding that the masculine is light and the feminine is love and together is love and light connecting to that light and anchoring that in by understanding that that love and light unity consciousness source is universal it's already all around us there is fatherly love motherly love so on and so forth all around us but it's anchoring that in and becoming whole within ourselves and understanding that all of the love that we ex that we see without whether it's uh you know envy or otherwise through the that we may be experiencing by seeing it in other people or desire to have that within yourself those are all fragments of your source consciousness that as you are now ascending to the higher dimensional understanding and higher dimensional consciousness you are being called to as you anchor that in you begin to see how everything else is a defragmentation of that source consciousness that lives within you and that is really for a lot of the feminine or masculine actually for both it's anchoring in that uh, elevated consciousness and as you do so that's kind of where the clear cognizance clairvoyance and all of that begins to come in because you begin to understand everything and everyone else as fragments of yourself and you begin to see the interpretation of their human experience as ha having had already been whole within yourself going back to why christ consciousness oftentimes is depicted to transcend time space and motion is because we're when you're so attuned to the quantum level of your soul you begin to understand that everything in this matrix is a constant vibration and so you know if you lose a leg a limb uh, your hair or whatever who you are in essence doesn't fundamentally change but your body may have and that's because your soul is quantum is eternal is absolute is your incarnation that is temporary and so with that you begin to understand the fragments of that temporary incarnation in other people and the thing is really mirroring back and then as you empower yourself to be the change that you want to see you are essentially transmute, transmuting the entire world around you because you become more finite of those densities that is soul that is quantum and so as you begin to really step into the christ consciousness you can permeate the the deeper densities right the things that are denser than that of christ consciousness so you know the water into wine electrokinesis pyrokinesis and all those things because the awareness of your quantum existence and experience can permeate now the world without and so it's coming in to really begin to understand that that which we desire without already exists within and are being called to tap into that inner masculine energy that knows that space is being properly held for us and that we are enough and that we do not need someone else to validate that and our father figure in this matrix incarnation oftentimes is what's supposed to show us but those that have missed out on that like so many of us have it allows to uh that devoid of that pain without allows us to now understand that that power was always within right because how can we desire something we have never experienced if it's not something that we already know and that is going back to remembrance we know what we desire because we've always had it the world around us was showing us how 
it was not being mirrored in the way that we felt vibrationally it should have been but with that not having had happened it brought us that much closer to understanding that we are enough within ourselves because we were devoid of it without we are coming now into that light and empowerment within indicative of that validation outside which will be harder for people that had a quote-unquote more comfortable third density existence up until this point but we're all returning to that source consciousness With the five of pentacles it, it does also go back to the fact that many do not know what's going to happen from here but that's okay it's about moving from being a human doing to a human being and with that um being forced to sit still but there's nothing wrong with stillness right it's it's calling us to really begin to understand why i said that we've had such a hard time being still and many of us if, if not everyone who didn't grow in a very overtly toxic households grew up likely in a very enmeshed household and so one parent's triggers was the entire household's triggers and that was a false sense of bonding because it was not a bonding that was rooted in unconditional love and holding space and respecting your experience and in embracing you and and really honoring uh you for for your human experience it was rooted on um a lot of uh, emotionally um, immature maybe parents because it's all they've known and so with that emotional maturity th there was a lot of uh, you know ideologies that maybe you were treated more like a friend and less like a child which in some ways could have benefited your success or your uh, quantum understanding of the 3d paradigm but on the other side of that you really never got to know yourself because when those things happen and the triggers of we be, we begin to feel that we are emotionally responsible for our parents because it is so open and so enmeshed and so uh, we inevitably then begin to put other people's emotions before our own and next thing you know we've been lost in everyone else never having had truly gone to know ourselves and this is something that is now coming into our frontal sphere of awareness and screaming color as we are now during this time with the quarantine and otherwise and so many masculine um energies are uh, and feminine but but you know they're having a harder time sitting sitting still and becoming antsy but it, the more that is being resisted the more uh the more troublesome it will be to get back to that zero point and so um with that these are the energies that are in part assisting us and in part mirroring to us so um a divine warrior uh the ten of cups uh divine warrior uh confounds the wicked and brings victory and peace so it is as as we step into our our masculine warrior to face those triggers that we were told uh should be suppressed or otherwise but people that were not em uh, emotionally or, or or mentally mature or otherwise it, now it, as we face those triggers we are going to we are being met increasingly with victory and peace and and key phrase here being peace because with going to what we had said about enmeshments a lot of people don't even know to begin to appreciate inner peace because it's something that they've never experienced and so with that liberation deliverance from enemies both visible and invisible and that's actually really beautiful because it's the immediate subsequent card to that and it's liberating us from all of the false ideology that the chains were only ever in our mind right and so as we begin to step into our alignments and our power the problem is not that people have been powers taken away from them is that they never realized they had it in the first place so it's really liberating our higher self our creative desire our soul and in car but, but it's interesting because in liberating the prison of the mind we can incarnate those things into this human experience and then anchor that in uh, that heaven on earth kind of anchoring and having deliverance again from the visible and invisible and this goes back to the beginning of the reading where we said you know if someone is not holding space for you or it, it's it's about getting away from lying and just being honest and saying right now um you're infringing on my emotions and you know that's not in your jurisdiction to do or otherwise so 
uh, with the physical being able to claim your power, draw those boundaries, and the invisible, it goes back to the higher self. And again, we have to remember that the human uh, experience of the human ocular system has three photoreceptors, whereas to even shrimp have 16. So there's so much that we cannot see, gamma rays, x-rays, and, and all of those vibrational resonance, all of those energies are being... Um, until we get to a point of remembrance, they come through in and out of us. And so when some people say like, you know, for example, like uh, the narcissist in the 3D incarnation, it's a very specific vibrational resonance. It's a very specific characteristic that has been universal since the beginning of time, rich or poor, not knowing each other. It is a universal continuum of that is how that energy behaves. That is a, a clear vibration or, or state of consciousness, right? That transcends that which we see because it 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 plagues everyone that is plugged into that frequency right and so for that reason many people have depicted those things as demons and what have you but going back to understanding that angels and demons and all that it speaks to a vibrational resonance and the characters that we see in drawings are the actors that play those things so in that we are breaking free from those chains by as we go back to remembrance discernment and unconditional love we break free of the prison of of those vibrations being able to come through in and out of us like broken antennas that we feel we are a victim to. We are not a victim of the current energies. The current energies are coming up so we can transcend, transmute, integrate, or anchor in, showing us aspects of ourselves that have not been healed. And that's what's coming up a lot right now. As we anchor and step into our empowerment, we are going to break free from those chains, again, invisible and visible. <clears throat> as I said, this was going also going to what is contra uh, contrast to us and so what is coming up here is political ambitions wins judgments protects all those who seek the truth and so we are seeing a lot of cognitive dissonance gaslighting and things like that in the outside world and what that's really showing us during this time is how to be present indicative of those things because those things without do not define this but also understanding that with these nine of one nine one one energies of intense uh and triggers and and polarity and all of those things <clears throat> that those things are really really triggering to a lot of people because a lot needs to purge from the collective so it's it comes into fold partly understanding that individually there is a per personal responsibility but also collectively <clears throat> We have a responsibility because that that who is neglected individually, their impact will have a collective impact on the entire collective, right? So understanding that juxtaposition and understanding that the truth always lives within ourselves, regardless of the noise without, right? So we're seeing more and more noise without so that many that are already predisposed to intuition so that we can begin to tune them out, which is interesting because it's something that we're not always seeing in the news right now because we almost feel like the more bombarded we are with coverage the more disconnected we are from it so we can observe it from an objective perspective that is not internalizing it and in doing so we are it's actually pushing us further inward even though it seems more chaotic outward and so it's bringing us to the ultimate truth that lives within ourselves and the uh, final mirror it's uh provides expansive intelligence and gives us the grace of god so this is going back to in juxtaposed to the world without it it's going it's going back to the expansion of our soul of our, of our awareness of our cosmic consciousness of our intuition and all knowing and it, with the grace it also allows especially for a lot of the inner masculine to anchor in the grace of god as i stated here to no longer resist or um and what I mean by resist is standing in your power and, and being empowered and standing wholeheartedly in solidarity with that which is right for the greater good of all is very different than bickering and arguing and fighting because that is the energy exchange there is rooted in triggers, right? So it's it's because we are transcending part of transcending the narcissistic paradigm is transcending the gaslight, the the smoky mirrors transcending all of those things to get to the ultimate truth right so the more we engage with that which is rooted on in triggers there's not going to be a cohesive answer there's not going to be the light of truth integration introspection or ascension 
when it's coming from that place because we are perpetuating that which we have not integrated within so it's drawing us uh more into the chaos and the smoky mirrors and further away but whereas when we step into the grace of empowerment and central column and the divine feminine and the divine masculine we step into the grace of cosmic consciousness remembrance and awareness and with that the the grace of god of, of understanding and being graceful to what is happening to the world without understanding that that is something that we are collectively transmuting and being able to see it with grace empathy and compassion rather than playing into the triggers and in doing so, it'll invoke and activate the peace within for them to, it'll, it, again, the light they see in you is the light uh, you see in them and opposite and, and the inverse, right? So it's being able to step into that awareness and to step into that grace to, it's like one of the most powerful, you know, states of being is calm and certain right but with that certainty comes that conviction but there's also holding space and grace knowing that in their human experience they haven't arrived to that point but in in being in that in that in that present state which i know when i'm not channeling i have a very uh, not a very hard time but it's something that i break out of all the time and it's normal we cannot expect to always be in this christ consciousness especially so far during the time so we cannot judge ourselves too harshly or judge ourselves at all for that matter but rather become attuned to it so that we may we may begin to understanding it understand it by calling it out for what it is and then begin to anchor and integrate with that and doing so again with grace with kindness and deliverance of that grace and so an angel uh, that can help us get to this point the lover's card uh haniel uh, joy and pleasure bring happiness to couples removes negative energy so uh, this is an energy that you can begin to tap into um uh, to help anchor that in um and so i want to draw a final message from this deck a concluding message soul time the frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibilities of a new reality to emerge one that embraces the concept that while the cor corporeal body is mortal the soul is timeless limitless and infinite so i'm going to read that again because it, it is the overarching uh, theme of this whole reading the frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibility of a new reality to emerge one that embraces the concept that while the uh, the pain body is mortal the soul is timeless limitless and infinite so it's all happening uh for you not to you so with that being said guys thank you guys so much love and light and i will see you guys next time bye <laughs>